Hi there. Hi there. Uh, uh, very quick, very short quick video short this time, not the 18 minute short video I recorded last time. I'm going to kick off uh, the standard mapping, same as we had last time. Um, Santa Wired, um, Danny Ramirez, I believe that is, or D Ramirez, whatever his first name actually is. As you can see, you've got the standard mapping, which uh, corresponds if I want to move up and down. Uh, within the red box. Sometimes though the, the tracks that you want aren't in the red box, they're some way away and you want to keep the focus where it is on the screen effectively. So what I've got is another scene which is uh, kind of set up to run like a, a Pioneer CDJ and a DJM600. If I press Shift and 5 you can see the functionality now changes and now the focus of the highlighted clip here uh, row 38 for example is what's going to play if I press the pad at the top okay so as you can see it's turned green hopefully you can see uh, rather than the orange green meaning play obviously if I press uh, green again it's a toggle on and off type affair now I've actually got the quantize up here set to a beat so what it does mean is the one below works a little bit like the Q button on the CDJ in there as I press and let go it's quite good especially if you're uh, mixing from 1210s or CDJs into Ableton uh, I always used to do that fiddle with the tempo get it closer get it closer keep going keep going keep going etc now if I uh, set that one going what I've also got um, is some extra functionality in these buttons here what uh, I'll close the IO down it's taking a bit of screen space there if I go to three as I would normally uh, which is playing the conga break track you can see a third rack in there now and uh, at the moment with this actually showing us off the effect depth effect X select there's nothing there so if I change that to be say green the first thing it does is to select a kind of gate effect it, it disables the volume control here so now embedded in that rack is a gate that also has a reverb kicking in at the halfway point to the left with pretty much nothing and then you've got a different reverb kill or really some auto filter and beat repeat stuff that eventually builds up to a nice little chugger sort of noise now you can do anything you like with that uh, effectively all you need to do is in the chain play some racks because as I press this button all it does is select which of the effects are selected and then this is now mapped to the effect death uh, as you can see they're just moving that from green to red turns another macro on and off haven't actually done anything with that yet that's totally up to you what you want to do with it and the final thing I want to quickly show you is if I bring up the crossfader, this bottom line here actually shows the state of the crossfader. Right, red, kind of works. Orange, A, where well, it's got an A in it. So you've got that option. The clip stops here. Uh, before they used to stop the clip, now obviously I've got the stop clip on the toggle. So instead, you should be able to. Pressing it on takes it to 127cc, so the top of the mapping. Letting go. Takes it back to the last known cc for the volume. So obviously on the full, it kind of does that. Um, that's about it really. Um, the other functionality that I've added um, since the last time you saw it was what I promised with regards to the sends. Uh, Pan Bank still has my master controls on, it can be reset very easily. Uh, send A is actually strangely send D. And that has a ping pong type effect on. Send B hasn't got an awful lot on it at the moment, I must admit, and send C. But what is different to the 
native mapping is a five fiddle with these. When I go back to them, between them, it actually updates the lights based on the, the last known setting. Anyway, that's it. Um, if you want a copy of the template, hit me up at the studiosessions.co.uk or leave me a line on vimeo.com vimeo.com forward slash studio sessions. Thank you very much.